All right, seeing if this thing works. Okay. Okay. I well, we hope this setup is working. Um, it's my first attempt at this, so who knows how it's going to go. All right, hope you guys can hear me. Um, I got this new setup here, so hopefully it's not going to be a complete disaster. All right, there are a lot of people on here, a lot more than I thought. All right. All right. So uh, I pulled out this shirt. I used to do these videos um, last year that I'd wear these shirts and uh, I haven't worn it for a while. So I figured I would pull it out for <laughs> the uh, live stream. Um, all right. So. So I thought just with this first one, um, I'll, hopefully there'll be enough interest in doing these live streams more often. Um, but hopefully for this first one, just to go over some basic stuff, maybe some uh, Q and A general kind of stuff. Uh, people have questions about the the, the uh, channel or just geography stuff in general. I'm going to be kind of messing around with this for the first few minutes. Um, all right, so I'm looking over at chat. Wow, a lot of stuff here. All right, so we got people from all over the country, all over the or all over the world. Wow, this is really cool. Um, so if you want to uh, throw up some questions in the chat, I'll ask, uh, I'll answer the stuff you got um, questions about. It can be about um, the channel in general, or um, a lot of folks are talking about just uh, asking me general questions about myself, which I guess that's okay too. Um, All right, a couple of um, little announcements about the channel. Um, one thing I would like to do is get a. Uh, Hopefully there's somebody, a subscriber, or I'm gonna put a, a specific other announcement out about getting uh, a logo designed for the channel. Maybe something that's like a, something real simple, geography oriented. So if there's anybody that's a graphic designer or an artist that can do something like that. Cause if you've seen my setup where I have the little bat sticker behind my desk and that's kind of a symbol for the, the National Spelio Society which is like the cave, caving group. So that sticker is kind of like the secret handshake for the for this the society. So I thought something like that kind of for geography, um, almost like a secret handshake kind of symbol type thing. So I'm going to put out some info on that. Um, a lot of folks have been asking about uh, streaming a game called GeoGuessr, which is a really fun geography game. Um, so I might be doing that a little bit uh, soon as well. All right, so. So if you guys are an artist or a graphic designer, <laughs> I'll put out some info for maybe you can help design a cool logo for the channel. Um, all right. I've never actually done this, so I'm still trying to um, figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna start going through some questions here that people have asked, and feel free to uh, just throw something up if you want to. Um, 
ask, keep it geography oriented or something. Uh, all right. Oh, um, also, oh, okay. Also, I did not. Oh, yeah. Thank you for, for any kind of um, super chat. So I didn't even realize this thing was set up for that. Um, yeah, uh, definitely appreciate anything that, anything that's going to um, be towards super chat. Obviously, this. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to start going through questions here. Um, what is the best from Daniel? What's the best cross country road trip for someone who's never been to the U.S. before? Um, for cross country road tripping, I think if you've never been to the U.S., you're probably going to fly into one of the major cities, either L.A., San Francisco, New York, um, rent a car. And so if you, it all depends on how much time you've got because the number one thing is going to be how much time do you have to spend for your trip? Uh, where do you want to go? What are the main things you want to see? So most people want to see a pretty good mix of cities and national park kind of stuff. So, um, so if you're flying into New York, I would definitely stay, say go for always the biggest cities. That's where you're going to have the most, uh, most stuff to see, but also some of the, the national parks are going to be mainly in the West, the main, the main ones you'll want to see. So, uh, it's kind of an open question, but I uh, will be doing some more stuff about road tripping coming up because 2020 obviously wasn't the best year for road tripping. So um, hopefully get some more road tripping stuff on here. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Well, there we go. Santa Cruz, California, one of my favorite cities. Let's see. Uh, two master ever thought about doing an accent on the US video? <laughs> um, I love accents. I love going through the uh, this different parts of the South and how the different um, regions of the South had different accents, not just the the main ones you normally hear. But I'm not good with accents, so I, I couldn't really do uh, a video on that, being that I can't do the accents myself. But I have thought about maybe um, collaborating with somebody who's who is really good at accents to uh, <laughs> do some stuff with that. But I, I think I would have to be able to do the accents myself well before I could <laughs> do something like that. Um, Georgia or Florida? I definitely prefer Georgia. Um, Florida for me is a place to go visit, not a place to live. It's just too, too hot, too humid for most of the year. Um, yeah, that's not something that <laughs> my wife lived in Florida for a while. She got her PhD at university of central Florida in Orlando and uh, she did not really like it there. And for me visiting there, I wasn't real big on it either. <laughs> um, just it's too hot, no mountains. Um, George is much more well-rounded, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of beaches, mountains, cities, <laughs> all right let's see i really do appreciate uh this you know all the support guys this people from all over here that are on here um adam burke thoughts on visalia california that's my hometown i think it's really nice uh it's very underrated i think i don't think it gets the uh you know it gets, doesn't get the love it deserves because California gets a lot of hate in the media, um, really expensive um, places, but where I'm from, it's cheap. Houses are cheap. <clears throat> nice place to live. <clears throat> uh, winters are nice. Summers are not, you know, they're hot, but nothing like the South. Um, I think the whole Central Valley of, of California should be looked at a little bit more as a place to live or retire. It's actually pretty cheap there. Um, The coast is really expensive, but Visalia is not expensive. Um, a favorite place to visit in Ohio. Um, I go to Ohio a lot. I drive from Chattanooga to Detroit almost every year, go through Ohio. Um, I like Cincinnati. I like the, the walk around the downtown there. Um, what else do I like? Uh, Columbus is nice. Um, 
haven't haven't been through Columbus in a while, but Cincinnati's probably been my favorite city in Ohio. I also like southeastern Ohio near the uh, Athens and the National Forest, that area down there. Um, <laughs> my favorite beer style. Um, I don't know. I like cheap beer for the most part. Uh, <laughs> lighter, Pilsner kind of stuff. I'm not real big on darks and porters and stouts. Um, uh, my college background, um, I went to undergrad at Cal State Northridge, which is in Los Angeles. It's in the San Fernando Valley, about the uh, northwestern portion of the metro area. Very good geography department. Um, I'm not sure how it is now, but 20 years ago, it was one of the top geography departments in the country. A lot of good, a lot of good time there. Um, went to graduate school at University of South Carolina, which at the time was one of the top geography departments too. I hope, I think it still is. Um, so that's my, uh, that's how I got to South Carolina was to go to grad school there. Um, Helsinki. Wow, we got somebody from Finland way past your bedtime, Finland. All right. Lisbon, way past your bedtime too. Yeah, I I do. I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna have to get a moderator for future one. <laughs> this is a little bit more uh a little more than I was expecting, honestly. Um, but in a good way, I appreciate that. But um all right. Favorite things about St. Louis, Missouri. Um, yeah, I really like St. Louis. It's one of those places that gets a bad rap because you talk about St. Louis, the, the first thing they're going to talk about is probably the high crime rate. You know, it's got shootings every night, every corner kind of thing in North St. Louis. But um, the city is great. I think it's a great place to visit. I think it's um, very underrated because you can live in St. Louis and not live in the portions that are the really rough areas that get all the negative attention. But I think it's a pretty fun city for uh, it's, it's pretty compact, so you can live in the city, but being able to walk, you know, around pr pretty good. Um, a lot of big cities, you have to, uh, not great for walking, take, they have to take the bus more often, but St. Louis, I think it's great for walking around. Um, and for me, cities where you walk around are some of the best ones. Hereford Super Trucker. Great name. Um, yeah, I'm glad you like the channel, man. Uh, yeah, just the fact that people enjoy watching these videos is just a is so humbling for me. So I really do appreciate all the support. Am I a teacher? No, I'm not a teacher. Um, no, I've I've worked in emergency management with uh, natural disasters kind of stuff. I've never been a teacher. Um. Some of my hobbies, uh, things I like to do when I'm not doing geography stuff is uh, play a lot of video games. I, mean, I don't really watch TV or watch movies, so a lot of video games. Um, and I'm also kind of into cars. So just when I was a little kid, I was attracted to maps and cars as the things I was into the most. So uh, I think you put a Venn diagram of maps and cars and it comes out to road trips. So that's kind of... Uh, make sense with how I ended up going in life. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, NC. Uh, I have played GeoGuessr. Um, I'm nowhere near as good as some of those folks that, that do that for competition. Um, I play really slowly. And uh, if you're not familiar with GeoGuessr, it's a game where it follows Geo or uh, Google Street View. It just drops you somewhere. Um, in the U.S. or somewhere in the world, and you just try to figure out where you are. And I actually prefer the one for the world as opposed to the U.S. The U.S. one seems to be more about nailing it down to the exact square meter that you're at as opposed to just kind of knowing where you are. So, uh, but I do like it. I'll probably start streaming it um, because it's so fun, but I'm nowhere near as good as some of those guys you may have seen, like Geo Wizard and that guy. And, uh, he's way too good for me. Um, t 
Tom Harper, what's the most underappreciated areas that I've visited? Um, I think generally speaking, underappreciated is going to be stuff that's not big cities or the really well-known national parks. So um, I like all the big cities, but some stuff that's uh, maybe lesser known. Um, like just in my video, this last one was about Michigan. And I talked about a town called Traverse City. It's just a little town on the western shore of the lower peninsula. It's a real nice little town. Um, I also think in central California, San Luis Obispo County is pretty underrated because it's too far from L.A. or San Francisco for people to go there for day trips. But uh, it's popular for locals. I think it's very underrated, underrepresented. Um, Southwest Texas. No one talks about Southwest Texas because <laughs> nothing there, but I like it because it's uh, very open land. Um, um, Fox Foster, favorite country to travel to? I'm not very well world traveled. Um, I've traveled all throughout the U.S. and a decent amount of Canada, but as far as overseas, of nowhere. So that's why I haven't done much on the channel talking about um, other places worldwide because I haven't spent any time there. So hopefully this summer or uh, this year I'll get a chance to travel overseas. Uh, we'll see how the world is going. Uh, we were supposed to travel last year to Europe, but didn't happen. Um, Ever done anything with Big Bend National Park? Yes, uh, I like Big Bend a lot. I'll probably stop there a lot when I'm when I travel uh, from Tennessee to California. I'll go along the Mexican border sometimes, and that's a great spot for for stopping. It's way out of the way, but it's worth it because you can do some good hiking and camping, and it's uh, right, you know, right in the national park. But there's not many people there, so you can be uh, getting away from folks, even though it's it's a huge pop. It's a, it's a huge national park, but it's not. It's not popular. Um, anywhere in Africa, interest? Yeah, I'd love to visit anywhere in Africa. I'd love to visit anywhere in general. So um, there are very few places on in the world that I I don't want to see. I'd like to see it all. Um, if I were to go to Africa, the first place I'd want to go probably be Senegal and the northwestern portion of the continent, um, but also maybe in the southern portion as well, uh, near Botswana and Namibia. But yeah, I love, I love the road trip across the whole continent. That'd be great. Um, how tall am I? I'm six feet tall. Would you recommend... <laughs> uh, horseman, would you recommend I spend my vacation at Bombay Beach? Yes, you should go to Bombay Beach for vacation. Spend a week there. It's it's a wonderful place. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bombay Beach is a little town next to the Salton Sea in California. It is a it's just a dumpy little dive. It's very very strange place. Not go for a visit. Do not go for vacation. Um, Captain Hank. Kansas City is primarily in Missouri. What other cities are named after a state they're not located in? Well, there's quite a few that have a, a name that are of a different state. Um, there's a Virginia City, Nevada. There's a Colorado City, Arizona. Um, there's quite a few of those that are um, in the country, but not in the state that the, the city name is. How do I think my popularity surge happened? I have no idea. I think what happened is uh, right around the election, people were searching for election map, that term. And so there wasn't really anything up with election map 2020, the night of the election. So people were getting a, <clears throat> a, a video I did about interesting maps. And so folks that were looking for election stuff clicked on that. and I. I don't know, honestly, how that took off, but uh, I have a video with over a million views now, which is insane. I never thought that would happen. So, I mean, luck, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you 
yeah, that's the best I got is in terms of how I know what happened. I don't know what happened. All right. Victoria Bernuth, uh, my favorite aspect of geography. Um, when I was in college, I studied uh, climatology and meteorology uh, on the side as my specialty. Um, but I think my favorite aspect of it is just kind of the the, the human and cultural interactions, you know, the spatial variations of cultural things, mainly within the U.S., because that's what I know. But um, hopefully study other places across the world do the more I get to to visit them. But yeah, I studied physical, I studied uh, climatology, but mostly more into um, spatial variation of, of human stuff. Um, King D to D, uh, Derby Line, Vermont. I, I'm familiar with Derby Line. Um, I almost mentioned it in my video about uh, different unique uh, quirks and features about um, the U.S. because it's right there on the border with Quebec, and you can just kind of cross the street, and you're, you know, in Quebec. <laughs> um, Max, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm glad you liked the videos. Um, I try to make it as interesting as possible. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot on. Okay, I'm gonna have a hard time keeping up with all of this. All right. Um, how come I don't like Ann Arbor? Um, I don't not like Ann Arbor. It's just uh, it's not my favorite place. Um, it's kind of like uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, or Norman, Oklahoma. It's a college town that's been kind of sucked up by the greater metro area. So it's even though it's a college town, it's still kind of um, it's still a suburb. So uh, I mean, it's, I don't not like it. It's just not my my favorite town. Um, a lot of those major university college towns can have kind of a uh, maybe a little snobby type feel to it. I don't know. Um, Paul Tilson, thank you very much. Um, if I had to move to a rural place outside of my home state, where would it be? Um, I mean, I really like rural New Mexico. I mean, people have, you know, seen those videos on me of how, how much I like New Mexico. I like rural areas where it doesn't have extreme temperatures. So uh, New Mexico is really good for that. Um, really, anywhere with those mountains and nice scenery is something I would, I would like a lot. Uh, confused Owl. I'm not sure why people have been hating on California lately. Uh, I just think it's a trendy thing to do right now. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. I'll, I'll talk to people that are uh, in West Virginia and they'll talk about the, the coal industry going down and I'm like, they like, they'll blame California for it. I'm like it's California's fault for the coal. I'm like, what does California have to do with your coal? Uh, <laughs> um, would I ever come back to the California Valley? I would, I would like to, to come back. I'm not sure if I want to live there permanently, but uh, it's a nice place. I would certainly uh, consider an extended period of time there, but in terms of settling down and retiring, probably not. Um, all right, MCK, thank you very much. Um, talking about the Sacramento Valley. Um, yeah, I do have other videos planned on that series where talking about portions of the state that don't get, don't get talked about as much. So Sacramento Valley, um, you know, once you get north of Sacramento up into the Oregon Valley or Oregon border, probably do a video on that and also on the desert. So those are kind of the portions of the state that haven't get talked about as much. Um, I try to focus on stuff that isn't the most well-known areas of, um, like my video about New York, I focus on upstate, not really talking about New York City itself. So I try to give some love to places that don't get much love otherwise. All right. Would I rather live in San Diego or Philadelphia? <laughs> well, that's a pretty easy one there. I'd, 
I really like San Diego. I don't hate Philly, but um, San Diego is probably my favorite big city if I had to live in one. Um, I'm not real big on big cities, but that would be probably my top one to live in. If I Philly's okay. My brother lives in Wilmington, Delaware, the south of there. Um, he likes it. All right. What do I think of the best colleges for geography majors, um, Michael? Um, depends on what what you're what you want to specialize in. I know the Arizona State is really good. Penn State, uh, South Carolina. Um, but it depends on what your specialty wants to be. If you want to do meteorology and climatology, NC State, Florida State are really good. Um, UC Santa Barbara is good all around. But there's you can get a good geography degree from all kinds of different places. Unfortunately, it's not uh, it's not offered at all. Like it's not like history or math. You can take it at any school. Um, C. L. Gustafson, my favorite Greater Plains state. Uh, Nebraska is going to be my favorite state in the in the Great Plains. Um, I just I love the openness of the western portion of the state, the northwestern portion. Um, yeah, I just like it a lot more than uh, the rest of the Plains area. That's a little more. I don't know. It's pretty boring, but boring isn't always bad. But uh, I do like Nebraska. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm having a hard time keeping up with all this. All right. Um, Vasily Galenko, thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate the the super chat. Um, have I ever seen tornadoes or been in some bad weather? I have um, been real close to tornadoes, but mainly with hurricanes. Um, when I was doing my work for South Carolina, we were doing hurricane research and response. And so there was couple of big ones that hit nearby that we went to 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 take measurements on. One was Hurricane Isabel in 2003. Uh, made landfall near uh, Moorhead City, I think New Bern area, North Carolina. We went there and took some measurements. It was it was pretty cool. It was uh, kind of scary. We know it was just a just a hurricane, hundred and some odd a mile per hour winds. Nothing like a tornado, which would have been much much scarier. But um, Tornadoes are probably the scariest thing to be nearby. I was near one and from a house uh, about 10 years ago, and it was pretty scary. But in terms of work, just hurricanes. Um, Commissioner Orlando, thank you very much. Um, what's my other experience in southwestern Virginia besides Roanoke? Um, I don't remember specific restaurants. Um, but Roanoke and Blacksburg is somewhere we often stopped if we're going to be going from here up to D.C. or Delaware. Um, we used to go through that part of the country a lot more driving from here to West Virginia, but we go a different way now. Um, but I like Roanoke. It's great for walking around. Um, but I don't remember specific. Uh, yeah, I don't remember anything. Uh, I remember Blacksburg was a lot of fun, a little Main Street right downtown uh, next to the university there. A lot of cool little shops there, but um, maybe a little bit too, probably a little bit too old for the, the college student stuff in uh, Blacksburg. But um, uh, man, I'm sorry. There's a, I, I really need to get a moderator for these things in the future. I guess that's a good sign. Um, All right, Tiago, you want to make a road trip in the U.S.? You want to, um, is it worth seeing Chattanooga or Tennessee in general? I think Chattanooga is is a pretty good spot. Um, if you're into outdoor stuff, that's the main thing about it. You have to be, you know, into outdoor activities. Otherwise, it's not really much of a great place. If you're into caving, mountain biking, rock climbing, hiking, anything like that, it's going to be a great spot. Um, if you're not into that kind of stuff, then Honestly, Chattanooga probably doesn't have a lot to offer. Uh, that the, the uh, aquarium is fantastic, but in terms of road tripping stuff, if you're not really into outdoors, you can probably skip it. But Nashville is going to be a lot more fun um, in terms of city type stuff. All 
right. Yeah, data juggler, um, learn more about geography from Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's something that I'm actually gonna probably be doing is um, streaming Flight Simulator because if you're familiar with it, it's it's a program where you're flying over Earth and it's just been well modeled and mapped out to where it basically looks how it really is in real life. So you could go fly over a national park or some other area that you can't really get to otherwise and just kind of discuss it. So I'm looking at really doing that a lot with uh, that software. And I'm really excited about doing that because I got this new computer set up here that can actually run flights. <laughs> so that'll be nice to to do that and I'll probably start streaming that soon. Um, um, Valley Home Inspectors, how is it I'm so well traveled? Um, I'm just fortunate enough to be able to road trip and take time off. Um, I'll work kind of a little short term part time job for a little bit, save up money to go on a road trip and then <clears throat> get back, do it, do it again. Um, so I'm able to travel a lot more just being from California and living in Tennessee. I drive back and forth a lot. So I'm not really tied down by a typical job. So I'm able to travel a lot more. So I think that's what kind of, I know it gives the channel a little bit more of a different take on it. Being that I'm usually talking about spots I've actually been to. Um, what I, would I rather live in the Oklahoma or Alaska panhandle? <laughs> that's a that's probably a decision I'll never have to make in my life. <laughs> but um, I like the Oklahoma panhandle. I can probably do it there. Alaska, I probably have a hard time with it. It's raining so much in that south southeastern panhandle. All right. Um Andy did, I specialized in physical geography, um, specifically cl climatology and meteorology. But when not, whatever you specialize in, you take other parts of geography as well, but um, you just take more in whatever you're specializing in. Is Missouri a Northern or a Southern state? That's a good question. There are certain states where, you know, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Maryland, West Virginia, Florida, certain ones were, you know, are they Southern or not? But I would say Missouri is not a Southern state being that most of the population of the state live in the Northern half of the state. So there are about 6 million people in Missouri, um, about 2.5 million are in St. Louis and about uh, 2 million are in Kansas City. So most of the population is in the, the cities and the urban portions. But once you get south of you know, the southern third of Missouri, Springfield, Joplin, uh, Cape Girardeau, the Boot Heel, that's definitely very southern, but I think most of the population of the state is, would be Midwestern. I, I, that's what I would call it, but there's always going to be some controversy with what, what, cons, what, cons the, uh, what counts as being in the south. Favorite Hawaiian island? I've not been to any of them, so they're all equally tied for number one. Paul Patton, have I been to Bowling Green, Kentucky? I have. I have. Um, we went there when we stayed, when we went to go to Mammoth Cave National Park, we went to Bowling Green. We had a hard time finding a good place to eat that wasn't a chain. I swear, <laughs> I'm not sure why I remember that so much. Um, Nathaniel Thrush, thank you very much. Um, thoughts on Maryland? Uh, I haven't talked about the Northeast as much because it's the part of the country I'm the least traveled in. So, um, yeah, I mean, Maryland, I've been there several times, but I haven't done a whole lot specifically on Maryland. But once you get north and east of that is when I have the least amount of knowledge on um, places I've been to. So hopefully... Last year, I was supposed to go on a road trip through New England. Uh, didn't happen. Uh, but maybe this year, uh, which would take us through Maryland. Uh, my brother is in Delaware, so we stop, stop in Delaware on the way up there. So uh, we'll see. I mean, who knows how the world's going to be this year? 
Um, how many road trips has my dog went on? Uh, he goes on most of them. It depends on where we're going. If we're doing a heavy national park road trip, we're not going to take them because you can't take dogs in the national parks. But um, he goes on most of our other road trips. Richard Ames, favorite map projection. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a classic. I like the Robinson. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, I like the classics. I'm a good Robinson kind of guy. I'm not big on the uh, – you said you like the Winkle. I like the Winkle too. I do like the Winkle. The hardest – Aiden Hanley, the hardest country to find on a blank map. <laughs> For me, the hardest ones are always the Pacific Islands. Some of those like small ones, there's just a few couple of dots in the whole in the whole ocean or some of the ones <clears throat> that I have a hard time finding sometimes. Alvi Hernandez from Dinuba, California. What is up? Representing Dinuba. Um I have been to Mount Pisgah, Andrew, in Western North Carolina. Uh, I love going up that part of the country, doing some hiking up there. Uh, it's been a while, actually, because when I was living in Columbia, we go up there a lot more often. Now that we're on this side of the mountains, we usually are on the Tennessee side of the Smokies, though. But I do, uh, I do like Pisgah and the Pisgah National Forest. All right. Asa, thank you very much. Um, favorite place in the Upper Peninsula? Um, yeah, I like the Upper Peninsula. I just did a video talking about Michigan. Um, can't remember the exact spot. It was in the Hiawatha National Forest area. We were camping, but it's also hard to not pick pictured rocks. I mean, that's just such a nice spot. First time we saw that, we were like, wow, this is this is Michigan. Who would have thought this was Michigan? But um, yeah, I like it up there. Um, I'll probably be up in uh, Michigan at some point this year. And every time we go up there, I'm like, hey, let's go up to the UP this time. Uh, so hopefully this time we can get up there. And uh, definitely uh, Isle Royal National Park. I'd love to get my canoe over there. Somebody keeps repping, repping Aretha Frankenstein's in Chattanooga here. So got a fan. Um, uh, Victor, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, yeah, I have a pretty big music collection. So back here is most of my CDs. I got about um, 2,000 or so CDs, 500 or so records, and a lot of it's on a hard drive. Um, so all kinds of different uh, genres. So I'll try to put, when I do a video about a certain place, I'll try to have a video or a record of that, of somebody from that place up there. Um, so yeah, I just, I love it. I'll probably gonna be going down to Atlanta in a couple of days and just go down to a couple of record shops and just get a, get a lot more stuff. But uh, my favorite bands are Steely Dan and Blue Oyster Cult. And but I just like all kinds of stuff, blues, jazz, funky, heavy metal. John Yang, thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate all this, all the support, guy. This is really, really, um, really cool, really humbling. Um, thoughts on Fairfield County, Connecticut, cryptic? <laughs> well, southwestern corner of the state, about a million people. It's the wealthiest county in the state. One thing that's kind of interesting about Fairfield is that, you know, the southwestern portion of the county, like Greenwich, is kind of high-end um, New York suburbs, some of the most expensive uh, New York metro area real estate. But then the eastern end of Fairfield County, like Bridgeport, is pretty rough. So, um, yeah, it's Connecticut's one of those places, like more than most other states, you have a huge wealthy population and a huge poor population. So Hartford is well known as being one of the 
kind of the rougher state capitals, but then, you know, Fairfield County is portion of that are some of the most exclusive um, zip codes in the country. Somebody is a huge fan of Aretha Frankenstein's in Chattanooga. Come on down here to Chattanooga, wait for an hour, get some Aretha Frankenstein's. <laughs> um, all right, Pooch Unit, uh, what, thank you very much. What cars have I taken on my road trips? Um, <laughs> we've had a, a 87 Volvo sedan, um, 88 Toyota Supra. That was pretty fun. Um, a 96 Mitsubishi 3000 GT, Subaru Forester. Um, the 08 Subaru Forester went on the most road trips. That one probably went on at least 10, 15 cross country road trips. Never went to the shop one time. So um, those, yeah, those are like 05 to 08 Subaru Foresters are pretty much unstoppable. Um, standout stories from my road trips. I'm actually going to have a video coming up with some of this, the craziest stuff that's happened on some of my road trips. Um, cause I hope to do more road trip stuff, getting back into 2021 with the channel. Skyline chili or poutine. <laughs> that's tough. One thing I realized would took me a long time to realize this, but doing some of these videos where I'm talking about some of my favorite foods, they're often just some type of starch with random stuff on it. So it's whether it's the Skyline chili or the poutine or the Rochester garbage plate or the, uh, you know, Waffle House hash brown, it's just a starch with stuff on top of it. So I think it's just my favorite food. Put a bunch of stuff on some carbs. All right. What are my thoughts on Long Island? I have not spent that much time there, honestly, um, which is why I haven't discussed it too much on my videos. So I love to spend some more time. It's, that whole part of the country in general is uh, the part where I need to spend more time at. The best state for burgers. Ah, I don't know. I think of the of the of the regional burger chains. I think Shake Shack is my favorite one. Um, I think it's better than In and Out, and so. But as far as the best state for burgers, I don't know. I don't know. They're all <laughs> I can find a good one anywhere. Um, have ever been to McKay's in Chattanooga? Yes, I go there all the time. How many national parks have I been to? Uh, 25, 30 ish, maybe. Um, not sure exactly how many. Uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, have not been there in a while. Usually, when I go through Mississippi, we're going to go through along I 20. So, it's been a while since I've been down there. Um, I'm <laughs> Remember the first time I was there, it was the first time I had heard a really thick Southern accent, like a like really stereotypical thick. And the person I was with, it was at a drive through or something, and somebody in, in Biloxi or Gulfport said something along the, the speaker in the, the uh, drive through And the girl I was with just started busting up like, oh, my God, I can't believe you sound like that. And I was like, you are an idiot. You're going to get us in trouble. But yeah, that's the best I got on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I haven't spent that much time there, honestly. I'm not big on casinos too much, and that's not, that was one of the big things there. Um, Akbar, thank you very much. Um, have I been doing trips during COVID? Uh, no. Um, I've been pretty much just staying at home, um, not getting out too much. I, I was able to go 
on a little bit of a road trip. I didn't stop anywhere. At, uh, just camped and stuff. So I didn't really get to travel too much. Um, but again, hopefully this time this year, <clears throat> I get some real traveling in because last year was a <laughs> nightmare. Um, all right, JJ, uh, thank you very much for the for the super chat. Um, best argument for why South Carolina barbecue is superior. Okay, now I now the reason why I think South Carolina is my favorite Southern style barbecue is because I just like mustard. So it's not because I went to school there or because. I have ties there just because I just love mustard and I just, <clears throat> man, this, the mustard sauce is so good. And the last time I was back there, we went to one that was my favorite one before and it had closed. It was called Duke's in a Southwestern Columbia area. So um, yeah, I miss it. There's one called Sweatman's halfway between uh, Columbia and Charleston. That's probably my favorite one that's um, just in the state, but I, we used to go to this all the time, just, each week, try a different one. <laughs> um, yeah, I like it a lot more than the vinegar-based sauce in, in North Carolina or the tomato-based sauce you get in the Appalachians. Yeah, I prefer Alabama barbecue sauce. Yeah, I like Alabama's too. I mean, when I first heard about it, I was like, white sauce? Is mayonnaise? That sounds really gross, but um, I was actually surprised I liked it a lot. Uh, Shane Golden, do I get pulled over more in some states than others? Yes. Um, Kansas. Kansas is the one where I actually kind of avoid Kansas now because you, I just would get pulled over. Um, they would specifically look for cars with certain plates and find a reason to pull them over. I'm not sure if it's as bad as it used to be, but I've kind of stayed away from Kansas for that reason over the past handful of road trips. Um, Splat Town, what's my thoughts on New Jersey? People think you suck. Well, I mean, come on. Um, yeah, there is a lot more wilderness to New Jersey than people think. You know, the northwestern corner of the state is wooded. It's not really, I guess you call it mountains, but not really. But uh, there's even a ski resort up there. And the south portion of the state is wooded it's you know, pine barrens it's kind of swampy it's a really cool area too so i mean the state's very small most of the population is going to be just in the northeastern corner or the southwestern um, corner near the philadelphia suburbs but um yeah there's some other stuff in there it's not just the city and the urban blight but uh this yeah the south part near the delaware border is really really cool a lot of folks trying to rep culvers on here I think Culver's is all right. Which state has the, the widest variety of climates? Um, well, Alaska is going to have the most just because it's just so big. You can get pretty hot during the summertime and, of course, really cold during the winter. Um, long days in the summer, long nights in the winter. And in terms of the contiguous U.S., uh, I would say probably California because you have the Mediterranean climate along the coast, but then you have the mountains. And once you get out on the leeward side of the mountains, it's desert. And so you have um, you know, a lot more desert in the southeast. The northwestern portion of the state is where you have almost like uh, temperate, or temperate rainforest. So you have a lot more variety there than most other states. But anytime you have a big mountain range, you're going to have a, a bigger discrepancy in temperatures because you have a kind of separating um, the air mass is a little bit. My favorite Great Lake. <laughs> They're all so fun. I love them all equally. The best road trip car. I think a minivan is also a really good road trip vehicle because they get decent gas mileage. And if you have like four or five people, it can be really comfortable. Um, but gas mileage is something you want to look out for the most with road trips because that's going to be the, your biggest expense will be your your, uh, your gas cost. So 
it'll literally cost you twice as much to go like in a, a full size SUV with a V8 as opposed to like a car with a four cylinder. It'll, I mean, it, it makes a huge difference in terms of your overall uh, the cost of your road trip. Um, Mr. Ruby, I've never had a car break down on my road trip, although I have had a car catch fire um, and explode, but that was the first day of a road trip. But as far as breakdowns, no. <laughs> um, is Chicago underrated? <clears throat> I think Chicago is, un is underrated depending on how – you know, who you're talking to, if you're focusing on the all the negative things with the city, then yeah, it's very underrated. But I mean, I love Chicago downtown. Um, one of the best cities for walking around. I, I love to just park as close as I can to the heart of the, the downtown, just spend the whole day walking around. Um, yeah, great downtown, the high rises, the river going through there. You can just walk the lakefront pretty far to the north. You know, the, you can. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Uh, people focus too much on negative stuff. I mean, it can be expensive to live there, and you got some pretty serious uh, crime in the southwestern portion of the city. But I, I think it's great. I'm gonna again. That's another spot where, if things get back to normal, I will be <laughs> in Chicago this uh, summer. But you know, again, who knows how things are going to be. <clears throat> What do I think about daylight savings? I hate daylight savings. <laughs> I don't understand the point of it. I could wish it would go away. Actually, I wish we'd always be on daylight savings as opposed to going back and forth. Best places to inhabit for future climate change? Well, somewhere with a high elevation. <laughs> Uh, definitely not a coral atoll in the Pacific Ocean. Um, Louis Seymour, what's the most underrated city in the Southeast? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, Huntsville, Alabama is pretty nice. I think because it's in Alabama, it gets a bad rap because, I mean, it has to be terrible, obviously, if it's in Alabama, right? So, um but I think it had a chance to be kind of another hot spot kind of place people are moving to. I can see that happening in the next handful of years. It's really close to Chattanooga. It's got a lot of outdoor type stuff. Um, uh, Peter Dahl, thank you very much. Um, I've lived in Chattanooga for 13 years, so I guess for 07. Um, I know the the longer I've lived here, I've picked up an accent. So people are like you start starting to sound like you're uh, you're from Tennessee. That's not good. <laughs> um, Connor, which metro area has the most urban sprawl in the U.S.? Definitely Los Angeles. It just goes on forever. I mean, the the Los Angeles metro area takes up a footprint. It's about the size of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut combined. It's just so much space on the ground. Um, you could drive for well over an hour, and even if it's not traffic, and not even be outside of the city. It's just crazy how far it goes on. Uh, thoughts on Madison, Wisconsin? I like Madison a lot. I think it's um, there's a reason why it's growing a lot, and why the economy is booming, and why it's the top spot in Wisconsin to move to. <laughs> And like so many other places, it's got a lot of high tech jobs there, it's a lot of nerdy type medical stuff. Um, with the university there, it's got a lot of science and you know high end kind of stuff there. So that's the kind of stuff people are moving to. And so for any place like that, it's going to have a good economy. So it's going to come down for someone like me at least is can I handle the uh, the weather? And Madison, I cannot handle that weather. <laughs> Uh, most people probably could, though. I'm, I'm a wimp when it comes to cold. Spicy salami. Would I rather live in Alaska or Hawaii? Um, man, I would. That'd be tough. I, I couldn't live in either one of them, really, because 
I would feel like almost claustrophobic if I lived in Hawaii and Alaska. This, it would just be too cold for too much of the year and the night's too long. I would have a hard time with that. Uh, thoughts on Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Have I been to Florence, y'all? <laughs> I go by there all the time, like to drive from Chattanooga to either Detroit or to Charleston, West Virginia, which we'll go through each year. We'll go through that. And um, there's that, that water tower, which is Florence, y'all. And for the longest time, I thought it was just talking about how, you know, it's a suburb of Cincinnati, but I thought it was like, okay, we're going to put Florence y'all on there to say, yeah, we're a suburb of Cincinnati, but we're still in the South. We're still trying to hit home that, you know, yeah, we say y'all, but it turned out it's something else like a used to be the Florence mall and they changed it to y'all. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I do like it up there. I like that drive on 75 when you're, you're in Kentucky and you go over the hill and right when you hit the state line, you come down into downtown Cincinnati. I think it's a really cool look. Of course, the bridge looks like it's about to fall apart. <laughs> Um, yeah, I like Northern Kentucky. I like that, uh, the pedestrian bridge. You can walk from downtown Cincinnati over to, as a Covington or, uh, you know, the city right across the, the river there. So, um, trivia, what is the flattest state and the second flattest state? Uh, Florida has to be the flattest, and then I would say either Louisiana or Rhode Island, probably the second. I don't know. Gold Tigre, thank you very much. Um, have I ever been to the South Shore in Massachusetts? I, no, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming you mean the South Shore of Cape Cod? I don't know, um, but I have not been there. It's, you say it's a nice place. I believe you. Cool beaches. I believe you, <laughs> but no, I have not been there. Um, I'm very poorly traveled in New England. In fact, Boston's the only big city I have not been to. Illinois is the second flattest state. Okay, so I was... Very wrong right here on a live stream. <laughs> um, um, have I ever traveled to go to sporting events? Um, I don't travel too far for sporting events. Um, I like hockey, so I like the San Jose Sharks. And the Nashville team, they're called the Predators. They play two hours from here. And we'll sometimes go up to Nashville to watch a game. but. Um, not too often, though. Um, whenever I go up to Detroit, we'll usually go to or off to go to a Tigers game. But that's a baseball game. That's not why I'm going up there. But um, I do like going to baseball games. They're probably the best sport because you don't have to pay attention to it. You can kind of sit there and just do other stuff. Uh, which which cross country interstate would I recommend for a road trip? Um, I think I seventy is the best in terms of overall variety because you go through a lot of cities and then once you get to the western portion of the U.S., you're into national park. So if you starting from the east, you go along I seventy, you you can be going um, say you're in New York, you go I seventy across Pennsylvania, uh, you go through Pittsburgh, you know uh, Columbus, Dayton, you can go off to Cincinnati, Indianapolis. But then when you get to the West, you go through Denver and then across Colorado, and then you can get easy access to the national parks of Utah from I-70 as well. So if you want to see the good, best variety of cities and parks, take 70. Uh, the worst one is going to be 20. 20 is really boring. It only goes through about two thirds of the country anyway, but um, it's not the best. Uh, I-80 and I-10 are also both really good for for road tripping, depending on the time of year and what your main thing you want to see. Um, all right, how would I define a sweet eye or sweet tea? How would I define a big city versus a small town? That's 
lot of, uh, yeah, that's just a, a lot of subjectivity with that. So for me, a big city would be one where the metro area population is at least over 2 million or so. I try to go by natural breaks. So there are 35 metro areas in the U.S. that have 2 million or more. And then 36 is kind of a drop off. So I use kind of 35 as a natural break, and that's right about 2 million. Um, but it's going to be different for everybody because if, you, if you're from New York City, somewhere like, you know, Kansas City is not a big city, but if you're from a small town in Kansas, Kansas City is, is huge. So it just depends on your perspective. But um, I have a video talking about the best medium sized cities, and those are usually uh, around, around 1 million people for the metro area. And then I have ones talking about the best small cities, and those are uh, around half a million. So, but I've seen other videos where they're talking about small cities and talking about Louisville and Memphis. And I mean, to me, those aren't small cities, but I think a lot of us just going to be, I mean, your own personal perspective and opinion on what a, what's big. Um, have I ever been to Lake Tahoe? Yes, I have. Um, the very first time I left California was to go to Lake Tahoe. Um, real nice spot. Uh, right through on the border with California and Nevada, half the lakes in each state. Reno is just a little bit east of there. A great spot for skiing, but uh, we would just go up there just to play in the snow. I'm, we're not skiers or anything. My parents would go to the casino <laughs> and leave us to play in the snow. Uh, um, let's see. Montana in April, do I suggest? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it'll still be really cold. There'll still, still be plenty of snow on the ground. The national parks are going to be mostly closed off. You'll need to have, um, unless you're going to be on the main roads, you'll need to have ability to drive in the snow. The interstates will be, will be cleared. The main highways will be cleared. But if you want to drive through some of the small areas and get to some of the parks, then you wouldn't be able to um, see a whole lot. Um, it'll still be snow in, in May and even June and higher elevations in Montana. Yeah, I'm going to get some moderators. I, I wasn't sure how this was going to go the first time, so um, yeah, I'm just playing this thing by ear right now. Um, all right, so got to let's see here. Who's going to win this Super Bowl? I don't even know who's playing in the Super Bowl. Um, I haven't paid attention to NFL in a long time. Um, I think it's Tampa Bay, right? Somebody, um, Taylor's hot dogs. Yes. I love Taylor's hot dogs from my hometown in Visalia. <laughs> um, my, my opinion on upside down maps. I, I'm weird when it comes to maps. If they look strange, they always throw me off. So an upside down map really throws me off or one where um, the Arctic is the center and it's, oh, I mean, it kind of gets me, <laughs> kind of triggers me a little bit to see, um, even though it doesn't obviously matter. It's just a mental thing in terms of how the map looks. Have I been down to Corpus Christi? Yes. Um, I actually ranked Corpus Christi high on a list of top small cities and a lot of people from Texas got on me for that. They're like, what are you talking about? This place is terrible. I think it's the only place in Texas you can say something negative about. The people from Texas will be like, yeah, yeah. Because normally they get all defensive. If you say something negative about Texas, they get like, what are you talking about? It's the greatest thing ever. But apparently people from Texas don't like Corpus Christi because I liked it. And they were like, you're an idiot. Um, but I thought it was nice. A little 
the beach right there, um, kind of a divey little beach area, which I thought was cool. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, Nathaniel, thank you very much. How do I feel about the leftward shift in Georgia? Uh, like politics? Uh, doesn't really surprise me, really. I thought Georgia, it's been kind of a 50-50 state for a while, so it doesn't really surprise me too much. It's been borderline for both parties for the past few elections. I think this past one, it just, it was so important for everything that it came, you know, more light was on Georgia than previous times, but I, th I think it's been pretty close. Like North Carolina, they've been pretty close for a while. <clears throat> pretty, pretty even. Uh, do I enjoy, uh, do I enjoy Jacksonville? Um, I like Jacksonville. I think it's kind of the, the forgotten city in Florida because, <laughs> You know, this, you know, Miami and Orlando and Tampa, that's where all the exciting stuff and the tourists go and the spring break stuff is on, the, you know, along the Panhandle and Daytona Beach and you have all this other, you know, nice scenery in the swamp and Suwannee River and all this stuff. And then, you know, Jacksonville is the other one. So, <laughs> but people from Jacksonville get really defensive about stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll tell you real quick that it's the biggest city in the country. They'll tell you that real fast. Uh, I think because they're kind of the, the forgotten city in Florida in a lot of ways that they get kind of defensive about stuff if you don't mention them or they'll, again, make sure to point out that they're the biggest city in the world. No, that's Jacksonville. <laughs> um. Lars, yes, I have seen Lob Luca's video on, on me. I thought it was very strange. <laughs> I got a, a, a link to um, somebody watching one of my videos, a reaction video. I thought it was just really odd that <laughs> uh, somebody was doing a video on one of my videos. Very, very odd. <laughs> um, COD, uh, Sacramento has been growing a lot. Um, I mean, I do like Sacramento. I think it's, I think it's very underrated. I think a lot of times people that live in the coastal portions of California have looked down upon the valley portions because it's just, it's not the part that has that wonderful climate. It doesn't have the same, you know, excitement that you get along the coastal areas. So people have looked down on the valley, but now that things are really expensive on the coast, they still have a negative impression of the valley and they're oftentimes skipping over their own state to go to some other state. But Sacramento, you can get a house for pretty reasonable. Um, cost of living there is not any higher there than it is in any other city of its size. Um, I like it. So um, it's not it's not as doing as well as some of the other big capitals uh, like Denver or Austin or um, Raleigh. But it's, it's doing pretty well. I think it's going to take off a lot um, this decade as people are moving more away from the coast and realizing that the valley area isn't, isn't bad at all. Um, what's something to do while you're in Chattanooga? Um, if you're people that come here tend to usually, um, they'll go to the aquarium is the main, the main thing to see in Chattanooga, um, or other kind of outdoor stuff if, if you're into hiking or mountain biking, but <clears throat> now it's, it's a popular spot for a day trip or a weekend trip. It's not really big for, um, like coming for a week kind of stuff. So, but if you like outdoor stuff and the, the aquarium really, really is good. Do I want to go to the moon? I do not want to go to the moon. I want to watch somebody else go to the moon.
Um, do I think California needs high speed rail? Uh, I don't actually. I think the future of travel is going to be um, autonomous electric cars on our on our existing road network. I think Americans are too um, individualistic. I don't want to get in a train. I want to get in my own car. I want to go into a car, enter a location on my car, and it drives me somewhere. I think that's the future. Uh, in my opinion, that's the future of transportation in the U.S. But uh, that's not that's not my specialty for sure. Um, enter the Alpen, been to Bavaria. No, but I actually might be going to Bavaria this year. Um, it maybe would have happened last year, but uh, decent chance it'll, it'll happen this year. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I've not even been to Europe or overseas, but Bavaria would literally be probably the very first spot of a go to because um, my wife has family there. And so we looking to get, see some of her family before they get too old. Um, worst state. Uh, I try to like them all. I try to, I know it's so mean, um, but I, th I think the worst states are going to be ones that don't have a whole lot in the state, like like any major companies or headquarters there or weak in terms of uh, GDP. Mississippi kind of fairly ends up, for good reason, ends up at the bottom of most lists like that because there's just not a whole lot um, going on in <laughs> Mississippi. Will the EU break up soon? <laughs> I, have no, I hope not. Um, I've not been to Bahrain. No, I would love to go to the Middle East, though. One of my best friends lives in Kuwait, and I, I might have a chance to go over there to visit. Um, but I've not been to Bahrain. Or South America. Uh, hello, Uruguay. I would... One of my top trips to go to in the world would be a road trip around South America. Um, but no, I have not been there. Uh, Kraus 95, uh, difference in liquor laws. Yes, there are quite a few differences in liquor laws, um, even within the South. So, for example, South Carolina, you cannot get liquor on Sundays, but you can get... Wait, how, wait, how's it work? No, you can't even get beer on Sundays in South Carolina. In Tennessee, you can get beer on Sundays, but you can't get liquor in a lot of restaurants. And um, so if you live in a state that has no liquor on Sundays, a lot of times you'd be, you know, going over to your friend's house to watch the football game on Sunday. You forgot to get the beer on Saturday. <laughs> um, Tennessee, just a few years ago, you can made it so you can get wine in a grocery store. You had to get wine at a liquor store before. So now it's uh you can get wine at least at the store, but uh, Utah has some pretty strange liquor laws. Um, the drinks are very, are very weak in Utah, Indiana. I don't think you can even get cold beer. You have to buy it warm, which is very strange. Um, Rodrigo, what states do I know the most about? Um, the states that I've lived in, uh, California, South Carolina, and Tennessee are the ones I know the most about, but I've traveled a lot through Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, and Florida. So those are the ones I know the most. <clears throat> um, New England and the Great Plains I know the least. I have not been to the Southern Hemisphere. All right, you can get cold beer in Indiana now, apparently. That's good to know. <laughs> Where we were camping there, went to the convenience store, and they was like, but it's only warm, can't get, can't get ice? All right. Um, it's, uh, Canada, um, yes, I have traveled throughout parts of Canada. Not as much as I would like to. Um, hopefully, 
a road trip across Canada is something I would like to do. Um, but I spent some time in Toronto and Montreal. I, I really like Toronto and Montreal a lot. Uh, we got to spend a week um, in Montreal with my wife is at a conference there. Just really good time. Uh, one of my favorite cities in North America. Um, and love Toronto a lot too. And of course, the drive from Detroit to Toronto is pretty boring. <laughs> Goes to not the most exciting part of Canada, that's for sure. Um, how much time do I spend researching on videos? Um, it really depends on the, the, the which one it is. Uh, the ones about individual states or ranking cities, uh, those t take a lot more research. Other ones, uh, a lot of the stuff I just know off top of my head from having been there recently or um, just having this noted, known it. But um, the ones, like the one about Michigan took a while because I had to research some stuff I hadn't been to in a while. And the one for upstate New York took a long time too because I hadn't even been to, to all those spots. So um, it can be anywhere between a few hours to a couple of days. And it's, each video takes a very different amount of time to get it done. What bad emperor of Rome, what bad city do I think would be the easiest to fix? Um, I don't think any of them are going to be an easy fix. I think Detroit has the best uh, position because it's more of a blank slate. So much of the city is empty. Just so much of it is, you know, unused buildings and um, be a lot easier to start over, I guess you could say, from there. So there has been a lot more gentrification in Detroit. But, I mean, you can kind of start from square one in many parts of town. Other cities that are struggling, you know, I don't really know what the answer is. That's when you start getting into, like, talking to the politicians kind of stuff. But as far as, you know, I don't think Detroit, um, Baltimore ones have a lot of empty space you can kind of start over with, but I do think Detroit has the most empty space and the most uh, blank slate to start with. Um, thank you very much, Karin. Um Yes, a lot of people have re requested uh, to talk about the license plates for the states and um, I will be doing that shortly. The only reason I haven't done it up until this point is because they change so often. I don't want to do one when they're, um, you know, they'll be different in a few months. But I, I'm going to be doing that coming up within the next uh, few weeks or so. Um, now that some of the new states have new ones for 2021, so I can kind of get it better without going over so many of the old ones. Uh, why is Mississippi ranked last on most lists? Um, I think a lot of things that hurt Mississippi is it doesn't have a lot of the underlying physical geography that other states in the region have. So, for example, all the other states in the south have a lot of mountains or at least the foothills of the Appalachians or in the case of Louisiana, at least large, swampy, kind of pretty type areas. So other states have better, prettier state parks and national park type areas. Um, a lot of the state floods, so a pretty good chunk of the state is just a floodplain. and It's not a spot people want to locate um, any big companies. And, and there are no big companies in Mississippi. There aren't any major economic drivers. There's nothing in the state that is really important. So uh, I think that's why it falls behind and almost and why it ranks so low in pretty much every category because there's just nothing – there's, there's nothing there. There's no economic development. It's not the number one state for anything. It's just kind of, uh, it, it just has fallen behind. Um, <clears throat> but as far as how to make it better, you know, I don't know. That's a, uh, those are tough questions, but that's, it, I think the fact that this doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, physically, geography, or any kind of major companies that really would hurt you in the end.
All right. Um, fun memories of traveling by rail. I've never actually traveled by train. Um, yeah, I never even been on a train. I don't think so. Yeah, I've never traveled by train. Only only by road tripping or um, flying, but no no rail no rail travel. Um, Sarah, no, I am not good at accents. I can do a few, but uh, no, not good. Um, I have not been to Alaska. Mount Mitchell, uh, North Carolina. I have been there. I have not summited it. It's the highest peak in the eastern U.S. I think it's about 60, uh, 6,500 feet, I believe, something like that. I've been there, been to the park, but not to the top of the mountain. Um, that Michigan guy, favorite national park. Um, I like the ones where you can just really, really get away without having to make a huge effort. So, uh, Canyonlands in Utah is one where you can really, really get way back in the wilderness, but not have to drive for 10 hours or hike 20 miles to get back to the wilderness or to the back country. Um, or ones I really like, like a Yellowstone a lot. Um, it's obviously going to be very busy, very uh, crowded, but once you get away from some of the main spots, you can get on some of the, the trails. It's really nice. Um, so, the ones where you can just get way back in there without too much of an effort, probably my favorite ones. Um, favorite small city? Uh, I mean, I like Santa Fe as part of why I like New Mexico so much is because of Santa Fe. So it's probably, that's probably my favorite small city. I also like Monterey, California. Um, Bloomington, Indiana. I've gotten a lot of comments on that because I did not mention it in my video about Indiana. So people are like, what about Bloomington? Um, yeah, it's a nice little college town. When I was road tripping in the early 2000s, when I was in college myself, I would always stop at a lot of the other college towns to see how it looked, see how the campus looked, and just kind of compare how they all were. And, uh, Bloomington's really nice. Um, <clears throat> I saw they just recently finished the interstate that goes right through it. So you can get from, eventually it's gonna be Interstate 69 from Port Huron, Michigan down to Brownsville, Texas. And it's gonna go through Indianapolis. I think it's right now they just finished a portion through Bloomington. So it's a little more accessible. It was off, off the road to get there a little bit before, but it's, it's a nice little town. Um, Jordan, would I say that Chattanooga's problem is its location? Um, I think, yeah, I think one thing that hurts the traffic in the area is that it's located right in between a bunch of other major cities in the South. So you probably heard the, you know, Chattanooga Choo Choo, the, a lot of rail heritage here, because this is the way the pass is to get through the mountains. Pretty much all the roads have to come through Chattanooga. So, um, so we're two hours to Atlanta, two hours to Nashville, two hours to Birmingham, two hours to Knoxville. So we're right in the middle of all that. So everything comes right through here. Traffic has gotten pretty bad. But, yeah, they are redoing the uh, split there. But, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that everybody still has to come through Chattanooga. It's a choke point, basically, for the southeast. <clears throat> um, do I like to visit filming locations? Um, no, I'm not really into movies or TV. So filming locations is not something that we really um, stop and see. Um, unless it's something maybe very, very specific, but that's not something we normally go after. Thoughts on Murfreesboro, Tennessee. That's a uh, 
It's a suburb of Nashville, about a half an hour southeast of Nashville, about an hour and a half northwest of Chattanooga. Um, there was a Jack in the Box there. That's like a fast food chain in the west, western U.S. I love it. And there was like this one random one in Murfreesboro, and they closed down. I'm not sure why, but so now I hate Murfreesboro. I liked it before. <laughs> um, yes, the new Mississippi flag is definitely an upgrade. I like it a lot. The, uh, I like the, the muted colors. It's kind of like a burgundy and a navy blue. It looks really good. country with the most similar geography to the U.S. Um, there isn't really a good comparison. I think China is probably going to be the closest in terms of its overall size. And most of the population lives in the coastal areas. And the, when you get more into the interior and the higher elevations, you have fewer people. Um, a lot of agriculture, a lot of flooding. So I think it's probably the closest in terms of that's uh, varied landscape and kind of stuff because Australia is, is, doesn't have the same kind of varied topography and high mountains and all the same kind of stuff that we have here. But yeah, so I would say probably China. Atlantic City. Um, well, <laughs> Not my favorite place in the world. Um, it's, it's a little, little rundown. It's seen better days. I'm not really big in in gambling and stuff. I go to Vegas a lot. I've been there a million times, but I don't really spend much time gambling. Um, so I'm not really into the casino scene. And the town of Atlantic City itself is not all that great. It's kind of kind of beat up a little bit, but um, has a nice kind of beat up charm, I guess you could say to it. Um, thoughts on Eastern Colorado. Um, yeah, a lot of folks, when they think of Colorado, they're not thinking of Eastern Colorado, the part that's high plains. And once you get east of the Rockies, it's not the beautiful mountains and you're still a mile high in terms of elevation, but not in terms of the scenery. So, um, it can catch you off guard when you're coming from Kansas or Nebraska and you're driving West into Colorado and you hit that state line. Welcome to Colorado. Here it is, this flat brown, uh, boring plains but um yeah a lot of tornadoes there one of the more surprisingly hit areas for tornadoes uh, in eastern colorado um yeah open sky a lot of great dark skies there um beaver man where would i like to see a new interstate you know where near, there needs to be one is Ask a trucker, how do you get from Denver to Dallas? There is no good way to get from Denver to Dallas. There needs to be some type of interstate that connects, um, goes across northeastern New Mexico, the Texas panhandle, and then into Fort Worth. It's Yeah, there needs to be something there. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, so Denver to Dallas. Give me a new interstate, interstate 36, some of that, because... Uh, Emperor of Rome, my opinion on Reno. I like Reno a lot. It's one of my favorite cities in that size range. I would consider it a pretty good place to live. Um, it's got some little more diversified economy than other parts of Nevada, uh, like, like Las Vegas, where it's just all casinos. There's the new uh, Tesla Gigafactory there in Reno. So that'll be, that'll be nice. But the problem with Nevada is always that Whenever the economy goes down, it's always the first state to go into recession and the last state to come out of recession. So um, like right now, it's hurting more than most. Unemployment rates higher. I mean, the last thing you're going to do in a pandemic is go to Vegas to blow money. So, um, so that's going to be, I think, always the biggest negative with Nevada. But Reno is a great spot, great for the outdoors. Um, yeah, perfect size, not too big, not too small. Good, good place. Um, Pahulian, Pahulahan, um, slept in my car on road trips. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
it's going to happen. <laughs> There have been plenty of times where I was planning on camping and maybe it was like a severe storm and we ended up sleeping in the car. Um, yeah, if you're going to road trip a lot, that's just going to, that's part of what's going to happen. You're, you're going to end up sleeping in your car at times. So it depends on uh, obviously what kind of car you have and the weather of where you're going to be. So um, I was talking about Corpus Christi a little bit ago. <laughs> um, when we were there three years ago, we were camping at a beach and there was just so many like gnats and just flies. We couldn't even set up the tent. It was just covered in, in flies. So we just slept in the car because we'd open the door for one second and just be covered. So we didn't have time to get out to the, set the tent up. So, but yeah, if you're going to road trip, plan on sleeping in your car at least a little bit. Auto rockets. No, I cannot do a backflip. Um, Atlas, thoughts on the Idaho panhandle? Um, not one of my favorite parts of the country, honestly. I've had some, uh, not really issues, but, you know, a lot of times I see people in that part of the state when you're off the roads are kind of give you some dirty looks like, why are you here kind of stuff. and. Um, so not really my favorite place. Uh, I have in-laws in Spokane and we've been up there and down into Moscow, um, Idaho. But as far as Coeur d'Alene, that area, I've not found it to be the, uh, at least to me, weren't the, weren't the friendliest folks out there. <laughs> um, uh, William Hewitt, thank you very much. Um, the Charlotte suburbs, um, yeah, I, I'm familiar a bit with the South Carolina side of it, like Rock Hill and Fort Mill area. Um, it took me a while to, to kind of grow on Charlotte. I didn't like it for the longest time. Just kind of seemed kind of haphazard development. It wasn't really all that exciting. Um, looked kind of weird when it was just the, uh, the Bank of America tower was the only big skyscraper there. It looked kind of strange, but, um, yeah, I mean, I like Charlotte. I, if I would, if I lived there, I would live on the North Carolina side. I'm not sure why so many folks live on the South Carolina side there, but um, I also remember when they first built the Interstate 485. It was sort of like 45 and arrow pointing to the future. It's like what future? So anyway, um, pretty random. Um, but yeah, I like Charlotte. It's grown a lot on me um, from 15 years ago. I, Probably would have ranked it one of my lesser favorite big cities. Um, hockey boy, I definitely prefer dry. I, humid is, I hate humidity. Um, that's the number one reason why I prefer the Western US over the Eastern US. <laughs> An episode of red light districts. Yeah, probably not. Um, I was actually born in Sacramento, but, um, I didn't really live there. So I don't remember it much at all. Ironclad Ranch thoughts on Eastern Oregon. Um, on a road trip, we were in, we were driving from Boise to Winnemucca, Nevada, going through Eastern Oregon, the Southeastern corner of the state. And, we went through a town, I think it's called Burns. Uh, I can't remember the name of the town. We roll into town, and as soon as we get in there, a cop right on our bumper, like kissing our bumper, following us through town. And we're like, what is going on here? So then we pulled over to get gas. The cop follows us into the gas station, parks right next to the thing where you pump up the tires or you get water for your radiator leaves his car running while we are pumping gas. We get, we go back out, pull out of the gas station. He follows us again and basically like nudges our car all the way to the end of town. So <laughs> it was scary. If you've ever seen the very first Rambo movie, like the dude's walking through town and the, the guy kind of, uh, the cop kind of shuffles him through. It's kind of what it felt like. It was pretty scary. I was like, well, this guy's gonna, <laughs> this is one of those towns where you go missing and you never get you know, the cops like, I don't know, people go missing all the time. Um, 
but yeah, Eastern Oregon, high desert, really nice area, but just a little scary incident with the <laughs> local law enforcement. I've ever been to Santa Rosa, California. Yes, um, been there quite a few times. Whenever we go back there, uh, my wife likes to go to Sonoma. We'll go to do some of the wine tasting there and we'll go to Santa Rosa, um, which is right, right next to the wine country. Tom Ruzik, thoughts of, on the wealthy counties that surround DC? Yeah, uh, that's a whole different part of of the state we're talking about virginia that's changed a lot of the of the overall <clears throat> population and demographics of virginia but the maryland side is is just the same so but i think the difference is that maryland is mostly a suburban state so about well, five and a half million people in maryland most of those are going to be either suburb suburban dc or baltimore but virginia has eight million people and then about two or three million are in the dc suburbs so that's really Changed Virginia, even that's uh, about a quarter of the population of the state. Um, but yeah, DC used to have, I mean, a big chunk of DC itself used to be really run down, really poor. A lot more of, of it's been gentrified. And um, I'm not sure where some of the folks are being priced at or going if they're going on the Virginia or Maryland side. But um, yeah, the per capita incomes and household values. Household income values for the DC suburbs is really, really high, much higher than the rest of the US. Um, Aiden asked, what part of the US do you think gets more hate than it should? Uh, I think. I mean, one thing I've learned and <clears throat> over the past several months, just reading comments and stuff, is that people tend to hate parts of the country that are far from where they're from and are maybe not are quite familiar with it. Um, so people in the South tend to hate California. People in California tend to hate the South. But um, I don't know. I don't think it's any one particular country gets more than its need. It's just that I think people tend to hate what they know the least about. Um, Andrew, what's going on, man? Um, would I move from Chattanooga, and if so, where? Um, yeah, I, I, I've lived here long enough. You know, I've, I'm kind of over it. I don't hate the place. It's just I've been here long enough to where I'd kind of like to see something else and do something a little bit different. Um, but you know, it often <clears throat> it will. <clears throat> excuse me. It'll come down to you know, what my wife is able to do and where she can uh, continue on with her career. So I can go along for the ride. Um, a lot of places I'd like to be. So um, I don't think I'll be in Chattanooga forever. Um, hopefully not too much longer. Man. Uh, okay, man, there's a, yeah, so many questions, guys. Uh, what is the most geographically diverse state, Lundy? Um, yeah, Georgia is definitely one of the most. I mean, I mean, you look at the size of Georgia, it's not a huge state, but to have a, you know, a huge metro area like Atlanta, you the mountains in the north, the coastal areas and the intercoastal waterway, you get the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, the Piedmont, so the a big, big variety in the physical geography of Georgia over a short period of, of an area. Um, yeah, North Carolina is kind of the same way. Uh, Maryland is probably the most diverse state per area. It's such a strangely shaped state. I and mean, we have mountains over 5,000 feet or 4,000 feet. And you have coastal areas, swampy areas. You get uh, cities and suburbs right in the middle. So it's just a tiny state with a huge difference from one to the other. I have not been to Switzerland. Uh, opinions 
on the main line in Philadelphia. This is uh, the main line. That's the really high end kind of um, expensive. I thought, yeah, I think it's kind of like the gross points for Detroit is kind of like what the main line is for Philadelphia. Uh, I'm not super familiar with it, but I, if it's the part of town I'm thinking of, it's got the huge ornate historic houses. It's, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's probably where I would want to live if <laughs> I lived there. <clears throat> Has YouTube made me rich? Oh, yeah. Yep. My next video will be unboxing my Ferrari. <laughs> no. Uh, YouTube is not the way to get rich. Unless you'd like PewDiePie or something. Um, have I been outside of outside of Detroit in the suburbs? Yeah, I've, um, I go up there a lot, but... I, we don't just go to the suburbs of Detroit. We'll go to other parts of, of the metro area, into the city itself, um, but also other parts of the state. So I like to just travel throughout the, mainly the lower part of the lower peninsula because that's much closer to where I've been going. No, my wife is not the geography queen. <laughs> No. Um, the pie is a lie. Bluffton, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina is a really nice area. It's just a uh, just north of Savannah, Georgia. Um, it's it's mostly kind of resort, um, kind of high end, expensive. A lot of golf courses, a lot of retirees, a lot of people that used to retire from the from New England and New York to go to Florida are often going to South Carolina now. Um, they're calling them halfbacks, like people that would uh, move to Florida, but then move half back to South Carolina. So that's an area where it's popular for retirees. And again, Savannah is right there. I like Savannah a lot. Um, Nick, my favorite part of Minnesota, I like the northern portions. Uh, once you get up into the North Woods and um, the Bounty Waters Canoe Area, Voyagers National Park, Grand Portage. Um, so, yeah, I like the northern part where it's more wooded. The southern part, you know, where it's more farmland in the Twin Cities. But, um, yeah, I like the scenery of the northern part, northern portion of the state. Uh, Doyle, Duncan, Savannah, or Charleston. Um, I definitely prefer Charleston. Um, in terms of living, Savannah might be a better one to live in with all the things that have changed in Charleston in the past couple of years. But in terms of visiting, um, I would rather visit Charleston. It's got more of a, a historic district. It's larger. It's got more to it. Um, food, more, you know, more restaurants, more of a bar scene. But with with how much it has changed, I'd Savannah again might be a better place to live. Um, Jordan, the place that gets the most hate, Polk County, Tennessee. Pol where is Polk? Polk is. I don't know where that is. Let me, let me. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, it gets, it's not too bad. It's near the, uh, Near the mountains. Um, um, a topic that I look forward to researching. Um, honestly, pretty much all of them. I just the stuff that I do for these videos is what I would be doing for fun half the time anyway. So. Um, 
I, yeah, I, I like researching. I would, I was doing before I was making videos on YouTube, I was doing the same research I was doing for these videos anyway, just not posting anything. Um, the worst city in Tennessee. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think in general, the western portion of the state is not as interesting because it's more flat or the farmland. Um, the eastern portion where you had the mountains, uh, I think it's a little more scenic. But it's, it's also, uh, <laughs> there's some pretty funky places in the eastern portion of the state. But I think the western part, uh, Jackson's kind of kind of funky, kind of rough. All right. Um, the worst city in California. Um, I think the worst part of the state is the desert. So I think once you get into like Barstow, that's pretty, pretty bad. Barstow is a pretty gnarly spot. Um, yeah. I mean, any of those areas out in the Mojave Desert are some of the just gnarliest spots you go to. Um, Uh, Cincinnati suburbs, um, like I talked about Florence and Kentucky, but uh, the northern side is, um, the Ohio side is is pretty nice. <clears throat> um, yeah, I always like to try to find the uh, the different skylines and gold stars. So I, I had a little, little app type thing that showed me where they all were. Uh, I think there's one near the Sharonville, uh, Sharonville exit off of I-75. <laughs> I probably should not know that, but... Um, yeah, I like Cincinnati. Yeah, California City is, is another one of those ones in the desert. It's pretty rough. It's You may have seen the stories on it. It's just this giant area that was zoned, roads put in place, but nothing ever happened. Just kind of a joke. Um, Miles, thoughts on Puerto Rico statehood? I, I think Puerto Rico should be a state. It's it's too big to be a territory. There's three and a half million people that live there. The other territories are all in the hundreds of thousands. Um, there's no other territory of any country in the world that is anywhere near the size of Puerto Rico. It's just too big. It's I mean, three million people is way too big to be a territory. So it needs, either needs to be an independent country or be a state. I think it should be a state. I mean. But uh, that, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen before that, that happens. Um, Great White Nation. I I do play a little bit of GeoGuessr, but um, not not a not like some of those guys that really play it a lot. They're in the competitions and they're hitting world records and stuff. I, I like to play it, but I'm not, <laughs> not as good as some of those guys. Um, Carrie Shannon. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love the Central Coast as well. Uh, Morro Bay, Avila Beach. Uh, I love Pismo Beach as well. Um, I think that's that part of the state is underappreciated because um, it's it's too far from the folks in LA or the Bay Area to drive through when they're going to the beach. So it's just people from other parts of Central California that go there that have a little more of an authentic feel. Um, El Greco, thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania is a really cool town. Um, it's kind of at the base of the Poconos and. Nice little downtown shopping area. Um, kind of, it's been a long time since I've been there, but I do remember it being a pretty nice place. Uh, I do like that it's called Jim Thorpe. It's just a, it's pretty cool that it kept his name like that. Um, Ryland asks, Austin or Portland? Um, those are two pretty similarly sized places that are 
popular for younger folks to be moving to. Austin right now is booming with the stuff that's moving there. I think a lot of companies are wanting to move to Austin because um, Texas has no uh, corporate income tax, but I don't think a lot of people want to actually move to Texas. They want to move to where there's no taxes. <laughs> so they're going to Austin, which is not very, this is like kind of like the counterculture of Texas. And Portland's kind of the same way, but Portland isn't as popular as it was about 20 years ago. I think it's almost in, replaced by Port, or by Austin in terms of a kind of the hip young place for people to go to. But um, I would prefer personally to be in Portland because the, the climate, uh, Austin, just it's too hot in the summertime for me. But um, I can see why people want to move there. It's a lot of tech jobs and you're indoors air conditioning anyways. <laughs> Um, Benton, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've played, I've played it a lot, but I'm just not uh, really hardcore into it like some of those people that stream it a lot. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I apologize for not being able to keep up with this. I really need to have a moderator. I didn't think it, I'm a little overwhelmed with this, honestly. Um, all right, so uh, Trevor asked Raleigh or Columbus, and those are two other ones that are really popular, kind of like Austin. Um, they're both state capitals with a huge university there, and they're both growing a lot. And I did a, a video talking about some of this stuff. Raleigh has a lot of medical stuff with the research triangle, and Columbus has a lot of um, high-tech AI, like robotics stuff. So I think it's pretty cool what they're doing in Columbus because Ohio's lost a lot of factory jobs. So now they're new factories making robots to work in the factories to replace the jobs that lost. So um, two really good spots. They're popular right now. I think the um, Columbus is one of the cheaper places to live right now in terms of wage to housing ratio. So it's a really good spot. Raleigh is getting kind of expensive. Um, strobe Illuminator, why do I hate Los Angeles? Um, I don't really hate Los Angeles. I just think it's, it's too big. Um, I lived there for a few years and it's just such a hassle to get around. Um, I like the weather, but that's and that's the best thing about LA, but you can get that same weather in Santa Barbara or Ventura or Oceanside or San Diego without having to actually be in LA. I just thought it was just, it's just too big, too, too uh, stressful, too, too much, too much of everything. DJ Zero, thoughts on challenging me to a U.S. geography trivia quiz? Yeah, bring it on, man. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I like a geography trivia kind of stuff. Um. What kind of canoe do I have? I have a, a to six. I have two canoes: a sixteen-foot Royal X a tandem canoe. It's good for mainly for flat water, but a little bit for uh, river paddling. And I have a solo fourteen-foot one that's more designed for uh, downriver uh, stuff. But um, I don't use the solo one as much as I do the tandem one. Um, the best drive on the West Coast? I, I think literally just the actual drive along the coast. I think I, I think it's US 101 from Astoria, Oregon, down to about Brookings, the you know the Oregon coast. I think is really nice. Um, and then once you get south of Monterey, California, the Big Sur coast, that's pretty well known. You've probably seen that a million times on <clears throat> on videos and stuff. <clears throat> Those are probably my two favorite drives um, along the West Coast. They're, they're literally, literally on the West Coast.
Uh, Kansas City or St. Louis, Dirtbagger 22. Um, I like I like them both. Uh, I think St. Louis is more of an interesting place to visit um, for for my stuff I like uh, the live music and the, um, the different neighborhoods and stuff. But Kansas City has a lot of really good museums. It's probably some of the most interesting museums per capita of any city in the U.S. But um, yeah, I think I like St. Louis a little more than little Kansas City. <clears throat> Boston or Worcester? Uh, that one I do not know for sure. Uh, that is the only big city I have not been to, so... Um, I've been to pretty much all the top 100 cities in the U.S. except for Boston. Um, Queen Elizabeth is in the chat. She asked me about my thoughts on Toronto. I, I, I like it a lot. Um, last time I was there, I saw about four years ago. I just kind of parked as close as I could to the main part of downtown, just walked around for the entire day. My feet were killing me. Um, I remember there was a part of town I uh, can't remember what it was called, but there was a lot of like Ethiopian restaurants and a lot of cool little shops and stuff. There it was it was nice, uh, great city for walking around. I wasn't real big on the kind of the cylindrical high rises right along the waterfront. There, they all kind of looked the same. I'm not sure what the point of that was, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, I like Toronto a lot. A lot of a lot of great um, ethnic areas and great uh, individual neighborhoods. But real cool town. Um, let's see, Dallas or Houston, Jeff asks, uh, definitely Houston. I don't like Dallas. I'm, I've mentioned that on, on videos and people have given me, <laughs> gotten on me for a little bit, um, for not liking Dallas, but I've been there several times. I just, I just don't get it. Maybe it's something I'm missing, but, um, I like Houston. I like the, uh, the downtown good for good area for walking around, um, I like the coastal area. I'm not a big fan of Galveston, the beach itself, but I like that you're right there along the bay, along the coast. Dallas, I just, I don't know. I just don't, I just can't get into Dallas. Um, doesn't really feel like there's much of a soul to it. Doesn't feel anything, I don't, I like, nothing really unique about it. It seems just kind of like another big city, but it's just really big. All right. Washington State or Colorado. Um, there's a lot of similarities between those two, being that they're um, both have one major city and it has more than half of the population of the state. And they're both really popular right now. People are moving to both. Um, Seattle is more geared towards computer and high tech and Denver is uh, more of a diversified kind of high tech and um, science research kind of stuff. So I like them both. Um, I would probably rather be in Colorado because summers are, uh, or excuse me, winters aren't quite as, you know, dull and dreary. Um, but I like them both. I like the Western U.S. in general. It's probably my favorite, my favorite half of the country. Nick Arvin asks, what's the cheapest place to live on the California coast? Well, there really isn't anywhere that's going to be cheap, but um, the far northwestern corner of the state, uh, Crescent City, a town called, or the county's Del Norte, um, it's an old kind of a logging town, it's a little more rough and tumble, but it's it's not really expensive, but it's not, also not um, glamorous. It's not, <laughs> you're not going to see celebrities, you know, sitting out there on the beach kind of tanning themselves, but um, if you want to live along the coast, um, it's not that expensive to live there, but pretty much everywhere else in the coast is going to be expensive. Um, Thought 
thoughts on Great Falls, Montana? Uh, Great Falls, that's along I-15 between Helena and the Canadian border. I'm not too familiar with it. Um, so no, I don't have too many thoughts on Great Falls, Montana. Uh, Montana in general though, um, yeah, great. I, it's a different, even though it's right next to Idaho and Wyoming, it definitely feels different. The people there are a little bit different. I find to be a little bit friendlier. Um, I, you know, the back rows there are nice. It's just, I love being in those, you know, the Western wilderness areas on these back rows and these small towns and um, a lot of great state parks and the Ark of the Wilderness National Forest area is real nice. I received a lot of scam calls from Great Falls. Well, that might be the economy of the city based on spam calls. Um, all right, so all right, so Duke Dillon, LA, Chicago, New York. What's the best? Um, yeah, that's always going to be like, that's like the big rivalry, the three big cities. Um, they all do something different. Um, Chicago is, of those three, is not crazy expensive. But, of course, Chicago is known for just being wonderfully corrupt. <laughs> just every type of tax is high. Um, I mean, I like Chicago. For me, the only thing that's going to hurt with Chicago is just the winters. It's just horrible. I couldn't do that. Um, New York is bad enough during the winter, but Chicago is a that's way worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I people are leaving Chicago. I'm not sure if they're leaving to the suburbs or they're leaving to go, you know, to Texas or something. But um, I can see in the future, actually, Gary, Indiana being kind of gentrified for people that want to stay in Chicago. But um, yeah, I, I like to visit all three New York, LA, Chicago. But I wouldn't want to live in any of them. They're all, they're all just too big for me to live. All right, Bryce, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, what do I think of Bedford or Altoona, Pennsylvania? Um, I used to drive through there a lot too because one of my best friends used to live in State College and we I drive through there and um, – it's it's interesting. It's a little more uh, reminds me a lot like some of the towns in West Virginia that are a little beaten up a little bit. They've seen some better days, a little rough. Um, Altoona had got that kind of old company town look to it. Um, I mean, it's okay. It's kind of historic, and you know the scenery around there is very nice. I mean, once you get around that central south central Pennsylvania, it's it's very pretty, but. The towns there were, you know, not my absolute favorites. Um, um, Rodrigo, do I have any idea how many miles I've driven on road trips? <laughs> no. Um, I've done at least 20, 25. Each one of them is several thousand miles. So, um, yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, Brendan, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my favorite Great Lake. <laughs> um, I don't know. They're all so fantastic. I would probably say Superior just because there's so many more state parks and you know nice scenic areas are just off the shore. Not that the other ones don't, but I think you have more nature scenery type stuff with superior than the other ones. Um, Jacob asked my longest road trip. Um, there was one where we started in South Carolina, went all the way up to Michigan, then way over to Seattle, down to California, and then back to South Carolina. So almost a full circle. So more than just going back and forth. So that's probably close to 10,000 miles. I don't know. That's that's probably the longest one. But in terms of time, they 
always under a month, between two weeks and a month. All right, Will Dawson, thank you very much. Um, Tampa or Kansas City, now is that the, that's the Super Bowl, right? So um, I'm going to, I'm going with Tampa just because Kansas City, didn't they win it last year? So I don't want the same team to win it twice. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going with Tampa. I used to be a big Buccaneers fan growing up just because Everybody where I grew up was all a big 49ers fan. I wanted to just be something different. I was root for the Buccaneers. Um, all right, if I could see 49 states and not go back to the other, which one would I leave out? I don't know. I could do without I could do without Rhode Island. There's not much there. Um, time traveler asked Sacramento, Bakersfield, or Reading. So yeah, I've mentioned before I like Sacramento. Bakersfield is, I mean, I mean, it's if I'm, it's an hour south of where I grew up. It's not that great uh, it's cheap i mean if you want to live somewhere in california it's cheap um the air pollution man the air pollution there is so bad redding isn't that bad redding is kind of a people make fun of it. it's kind of a hick town but it's real nice scenery right next to the mountains you know not the bad air pollution so cheap i, I like redding i'd rather live there than bakersfield Um, Virginia Beach, I'm not super familiar with it. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I haven't really spent much time there. So a lot of times if there's places I haven't mentioned at all in my videos, it's probably because I haven't been there or spent very little time there. So um, yeah, sorry, I can't say, don't have a whole lot to say about Virginia Beach. Um, The Calm Bro, what's the most varied state? Um, yeah, I, mean, I think the states that have a long shape are kind of a weird shape, like, like California, North Carolina, Tennessee, states that have, you know, they're much longer than they are wide, they're going to have a much more of a um, differentiation between the other ends of the state. So, you know, North Carolina, you have mountains on one end and the beaches the other end. And, um, Tennessee, you have the swampy Memphis area, then the high mountains in the east. So <clears throat> I think just with California being a larger state that has um, much more varied topography, you're going to have probably the most varied physical geography there as well. All right. Favorite airport that I've been to. Um, I'm not a big fan of airports, but my last video is about Michigan and reminded me of the airport in Detroit. And there's this part when you're between the two main terminals, you're like underground, and there's like these weird sounds and music and lights. It's like this trippy kind of 60s, like a drug trip or something. I don't know. You would think Michigan has more like soul music or something playing down there, but it's like this. <laughs> yeah, somebody, you know, do some drugs and I walk through the Detroit airport. I don't know. But. Um, no, I have not been to Mardi Gras or any. No, I've not been to Mardi Gras. Um, I tend to not go to specific big parties just for that kind of. Like I'll go to New Orleans, but not when is Mardi Gras specifically. Um, Nancy, no, I have not been to Alaska. 
Um, I love to go there. I'd love to drive through there. I'd love to do the road trip with you coming up through British Columbia up into Alaska that way, but I have not, I have not uh, been able to do that so far. Uh, Zach asked, would I live in Miami? Um, probably not, and mainly because it's just so far down there to get anywhere else. I mean, you drive six hours, you're still in Florida. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be able to get out a little more easily. Um, plus, with Florida, it's just it's always hot. I mean, I'm such a wimp when it comes to climate. Um, Florida is just, it's just always hot. Um, so if I were to live in Florida, I'd probably need to be in the northern portion of the states where I can get out of Florida, get somewhere a little bit different quickly. Um, but yeah, Miami is a little bit too far, a little bit too hot, too much of the year for me. Um, Ever been to the Outer Banks? Uh, yes, I, I love the Outer Banks. I think it's my favorite uh, beaches in the eastern U.S. So, um, especially because you can go to the south, the southern end of the Outer Banks, and there's not many people down there because it's only a a road, a skinny road that takes you down there, and it's a ferry from the bottom. So if you were to just to drive, the farther you drive, you're getting away from where people are going to be going to. So yeah, I love the Outer Banks. Uh, Good way to get away from people, but you're in a popular beach area. Um, Johannes, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, Gateway, Colorado, Uniweep Scenic Byway. Um, yeah, I've, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with that. Uh, yeah, because that's that's a good spot. Because I love that part of the country. Because that main road that goes through um, the national parks. I can't remember the name of the highway. I think it's Highway 15. And so that one. Yeah, that's that's a good one too. Because um, I like the ones that go to the higher elevations. A little bit kind of windier. It depends on the kind of car I have too. The car I have right now is good for that. <laughs> Before, not so much. But yeah, that's some of my favorite drives in the country. That's some of those ones in the southeastern Utah and the ones in the Four Corners area. Uh, Jeffrey asked, have I ever gotten a geography question on Jeopardy wrong? Yes, <laughs> probably most of them. Uh, actually, I don't really watch Jeopardy that much. Um, but yeah, I used to, yeah, those are the ones you always are expected to get. Or like if you play Trivial Pursuit and you get the, the geography one, you get it wrong. And people are like, oh, you, I thought you are supposed to be so good at geography. Huh? Why would you get that one wrong? Um, Uh, Chandler asked, my favorite or least favorite thing in Charleston, West Virginia. Um, I go there a lot. I'm pretty fam familiar with the city. Uh, my in-laws are are all around there. Um, it's not my favorite place in the world. It's it's not it's not horrible, but um, there's a really good Italian restaurant there. I can't think of what it's called, but it's like it's huge, a huge dining room. Um, I like the Kanawha State Forest, which is a kind of like a state park right in the middle of town. There's some good hiking stuff around there. But, um, oh, yeah, it's not my favorite place in the world. West, West Virginia is not my favorite state. Um, but, I, yeah, I am pretty familiar with Charleston. Um, Rio, if I'm going to go on a road trip. Um, if I'm mainly, I want to go on ones where, if it's going to be uh, national park oriented, I want to be the ones where you can do like good camping, or ones that are city oriented, ones where the you know the best cities for walking around. So, um, if I'm starting from the east, I want to make it more national park oriented. So, 
with most of the parks being in the Western US. And then uh, if I'm starting from the West, then most of the bigger cities and metro areas are in the Eastern US, so more city oriented. Um, but yeah, this depends on what is the most important thing to you. I, I like a good mix of nature and cities, but some people want to see just one or the other. Uh, is the Salton Sea safe? Well, safe for what? <laughs> I wouldn't go swimming in it. Um, the little town next to it is, I wouldn't call it dangerous. It's just, it's just so weird. Um, it's, I think it is worth just kind of walking or, you know, driving through it to see just how crazy it is. But it's as far as dangerous, I wouldn't call it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call it dangerous. Strange. Yeah, and I, I again, I, I'm going to keep apologizing for uh, the moderating situation. I, yeah, I didn't realize it was going to end up like this, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, I mean, it's good, but um, I'll need to be better prepared next time. Um. Do I know where Sop Choppy is? I do not know where Sop Choppy is. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is actually. How, how much vacation time does my job give me? I, you know, as much time as I need. I can, I'm fortunate enough to be able to just go whenever I want and just take time. Um, so I'm very, I'm very thankful for that. I'll be able to go on a road trip. Of course, if the world wasn't the way it is, I, you know, be going on a road trip pretty soon. Um, so I am very fortunate to be able to just travel almost whenever I want. Um, Kev dad, uh, I love Congaree national park. It's, it's great. I, when I was living in Columbia, I would go there a lot, probably like a half an hour drive from there. And, um, you would never see anybody there. You could get there early in the morning, get on that boardwalk trail and not see anybody the entire day or go onto some of the farther trails that go back into the park. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. It was really easy to get to and very lightly visited and uh, not a strenuous place to visit either. You can go on these long, you know, several miles and not have to, you know, really do any hiking. You're just kind of walking on boardwalks or on a flat surface. Oh man. Um, uh, Puerto Rico or Hawaii for a tropical trip. Um, those are very different places. It really depends on what you want to get out of your trip. Um, yeah, we really like Puerto Vallarta. It was a great spot, a lot of great art galleries, um, nice little tucked away beaches you can get to for a little, take a little ferry, like a boat ferry to it little cove spot. There's nobody else there. It was really nice. Um, really enjoyed it. Hawaii. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a totally different experience. So it really depends on what you're going to want to get out of your tropical experience, whether you want to Hawaii or Mexico, but I, I love them both. You can, you couldn't go wrong with either one, honestly. Do I know of any jobs where I can make a living going on road trips? Uh, hotel reviewer, I mean, honestly, not really. You'd, you'd probably have to just have someone that has a big Instagram following and that's how you would make money off the road trip. I don't know how else you could do that. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, if I could find a great way to make money from road tripping, then I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, all 
Um, I have ever done the bourbon trail in Kentucky. No, I have not. Um, I, I love Kentucky bourbon. That's probably my favorite type of liquor. I got several bottles of it back there. Um, but as far as the actual trail, I've not, not been on it. Um, let's see. Well, uh, all right, guys, I hate to do this, but it's been a couple hours. Um, obviously, I need to do a better job with this next time. Um, I really, really do appreciate um, all you guys coming on here, all the questions. I Again, I'm, I was overwhelmed with the number of people on here and the questions. So um, for subsequent of these, um, I'm going to have a moderator and uh, be able to handle it a lot better than what I did. So I, you know, again, I am very, very thankful for all the, all you guys on here, all the questions, all the support. Um, and I'll put out some more information about um, for future ones of these where it'll be a little more of a, a specific topic um, <clears throat> and not so general and uh, probably not so <laughs> haphazardly done is this one. So um, but yeah, again, thank you guys very much. Um, I will continue to be posting regular videos and um, just, you know, again, thank you for joining me for this live stream and uh, next ones will be a little bit more better organized than this one. So, all right, guys, thank you.